Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Deera Chaudhary and today we are starting our Docker Essential YouTube journey. In this session, we will understand what Docker is, why it's revolutionary and get it installed on your local machines. By the end of this video, you will have solid understanding of Docker background and have it running on your local machines. So consider this as the foundation for everything uh, that today we are going to learn in this series. So let's dive in. Let me explain Docker with a simple analogy. You know how shipping revolutionized the global trade with standardized containers, right? Docker does the same for your softwares. It packages your application along with everything it needs to run, like the code, runtime, libraries, system tools, and configurations into a single unit called a container. This container runs exactly the same way, whether it's on your laptop, your colleague's computer, a test server, or in your production environment onto the cloud. There are no surprises, no compatibility issues. Docker is open source, which means it's free to use and has massive community contributing to it. This makes it incredibly powerful and well supported. So what exactly is a container? Imagine an apartment building. Each apartment is self-contained with its own kitchen, bathroom, and a living space. Residents in apartment 5A don't interfere with those in 5B. But all apartments share the same building's foundation, plumbing infrastructure, and electricity supply. Container works the same way. Each container is an isolated environment running your application with its own file system, processes, and network. But all containers on your machine share the same operating system kernel, which makes them incredibly lightweight. A container can start in just few seconds compared to minutes for a virtual machine. This efficiency it is what which makes Docker so powerful. You can run dozens of containers on a single machine without slowing it down. So many people ask, how is Docker different from the virtual machines? That's a great question. Many times you get asked this kinds of questions in, in your interview too. So let's uh, decode this that what is the difference? So on the screen, you can see I have two images. One is virtual machine and the another one is the Docker container. So virtual machines include an entire operating system. Like imagine copying Windows or Linux for each application. This makes virtual machines huge, often several gigabytes, and they take minutes to boot. They are like having separate physical computers. But on the other hand, Docker containers share the host operating system's kernel. They include your application and its direct dependency. This makes them tiny, often just megabytes instead of gigabytes compared to the virtual machines. And they start in seconds. Think of the virtual machines as separate house, each with its own foundation, own plumbing and electric, electrical systems. But on the other hand, containers are like apartment, sharing the same building infrastructure, same foundation and same plumbing. So both provides isolation, but containers do it much more efficiently. You can run 10 to 10, uh, 10 to 20 computer uh, containers on a laptop that might struggle when you do the same with virtual machine. Because whenever you are uh, creating the virtual machine, there comes the hypervisor. For each and every uh, virtual machine, you will have to create the hypervisor. But on the other hand, if you see from the hardware perspective, instead of having the hypervisor, you directly have the container and the host OS on which you want to run your container instead of just running the virtual machine with hypervisor and uh, the host operating system. So let's talk about the real problem Docker solves, why it is so famous. First, the infamous thing, it works on my machine problem. How many, uh, how many uh, times have developers said this when code breaks in your production while they are working? Docker eliminates this because the container that works on your laptop is identical to what runs in your production system. Second is the dependency hell. Imagine working on two projects. One needs Python 2.7 and the other needs Python 3.9. Installing both causes conflict on the same machine. With Docker, each project runs its own container with its own Python version. So it resolves that conflict. Third, 
onboarding a new team member. Traditionally, this takes days of setting up environments. With Docker, just share the container they are uh, productive in minutes without wasting any time. Docker also enables microservices architecture where different parts of your application can run independently. It's essential for modern DevOps practices, making deployment smooth and reliable. And compared to virtual machines, it's incredibly cost effective because you can run more application on the same hardware. Now let's get Docker installed for your machine. So there are multiple ways of installing Docker. So if you are doing it for uh, Windows, you can install it using docker.com. If you are doing it on Linux, you can install it by uh, using uh, these commands. And once you have installed by any of the method, you can go ahead and check by running Docker version or just Docker. Because when you run Docker, it will give you whether uh, it will show you whether Docker is installed or not. So for Windows and Mac uh, from Docker.com, you uh, you get a downloadable. But you can also use a uh, brew command to install it. So as I have a Windows machine, so I would be doing it on Windows. And so now to install Docker on our local machine, I will just search with the keyword Docker. Once I do that, I can go ahead and install Docker on my machine. So for doing that, what you can do is you can just click on Docker desktop. Once you are inside Docker desktop, over here you can search for Docker desktop. And you are inside this page. So from here you can download the Docker desktop. That is one of the way. But if you are on uh, Windows, you can also install it from Microsoft Store. So let me show you that too. So now I'm opening the Microsoft Store. So once you are inside the Microsoft Store, you can just go ahead and search for Docker desktop. And you can see the Docker desktop is available over here for you to install. So you can just go ahead and install it from here too. So I will just click on install and the Docker desktop is getting installed for me. So this should take around four to five minutes for it to get installed on your local machine. So it's installed successfully and now it is going ahead and installing it. So while installing it is going to ask you, do you want to give permission for this app to be installed? So I have given the permission and now it is just going ahead and installing on my system. So once it's successfully installed, you can just go ahead and click on open and it should launch your Docker desktop for you. And this is how your Docker desktop is going to look. So over here, uh, either you can log in with your email address if you have a Docker account. If not, you can just skip it for now. So I'm just going to skip it instead of having an account for it. So now I have skipped it and now it is going ahead and starting my Docker engine. So once my Docker engine is started, then I will just go ahead and run the command Docker version. So right now, this is going to be your Docker desktop. So later on, I will show you once we create the Docker Hub account, how we are going to associate that with this Docker desktop. But these are the available options, which are over here, which shows the containers, images, volumes. If you have Kubernetes, the builds that you have made, everything is going to be part of this Docker desktop. Now, let me take you to the command prompt. So, Now, once I'm in the command prompt, the only thing I have to do is I can do docker hyphen hyphen version, which will show me that, see, this is the current docker version, which has been installed on my machine. And you can also use the command docker enter and see if you get this kind of output, which shows that what all commands are available in docker and everything that also means that your docker is successfully installed on your machine. Now time for the exciting thing so if you want to really see that the docker is up and running and it can host the containers so you can do a small testing by just running this command docker run hello world so i will just go ahead and run this command for you so i'll clear the screen and say docker run hello world so 
so this is how uh, when i ran this command it was uh, not able to find the image on my machine because it was not installed so it went ahead uh, it grabbed the image installed on my uh, downloaded that on my machine and based on that it ran the container for me now if i take you to the docker desktop over here see in containers you can see one container is available over here so it last started and this is the container name that we went ahead and uh, this is the image name that it installed and this is the container name which, which worked so this is how you can see how your docker goes ahead and create the container so thank you so much for watching this introduction to docker you have seen the first crucial step in your containerization journey if you enjoyed this video and want to keep learning step by step make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the upcoming tutorials this is dheera chaudhary and i will see you in the next video